What is crackalacking? My name is Oriafe. I'm a second year medical student who makes videos about med school, college as a pre-med, BSMD, and whatnot. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Guess what, y'all? I am officially done my first year of med school. In celebration of that, I did a Q&A on my Instagram so people can ask questions about my experience. So in this video, I'm answering those. Let's get into it. The first question is, was it harder than you studied for your college prep? Short answer is yes. If you don't know me already or if you're not familiar with my channel, I did my college in a condensed manner through a BSMD program. So I finished undergrad in two years and took a whole lot of credits at once. And even that doesn't even compare to medical school. I had it easy then. I thought it was hard then, but whew. I definitely had to study much harder in medical school than I did in my undergrad years. The next question is, was it really difficult? I feel like the answer is kind of both yes and no. Content wise, it felt very hard in the beginning, but it was the easiest content. But just because I was new to it in the beginning, it was harder. As the year progressed, the subject matter only got harder and harder and harder. Apart from like the last unit was a little easier than the second to last unit. But it became easier to manage over time just because it's a skill that you get to build. So now I have somewhat of a better hang of it, but like there was never a moment in time where I'm like, oh yeah, this is easy. Never. Not for one second the entire year. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty difficult. But with time and experience, it gets easier to manage. The next question is, how can I be as awesome as you are? <laughs> Oh my god, stop. I'm keeping these anonymous, but I know who asked this question. And you are as awesome as I am. You're doing great, girl. You're doing great. If I were to give this question a serious answer, I would probably say to not limit yourself mentally and don't put a cap on your success. Okay, short story. When I was 12 years old, I was in ninth grade. This was 2015, I think. I had an iPhone 4 at the time. And my dad said, if you can get straight A's for the rest of the school year, I'll get you the iPhone 6s and best believe I've never gotten straight A's in my life y'all never before this never but somehow when I had the incentive or a motivation to do it I was able to get straight A's for the rest of the year and everything and then I realized hmm I have the capability to do this if I really put in the effort you know so I feel like just because I didn't think straight A's was something that was in reach for me before when I realized it was I decided to stop limiting myself you know I don't know if that makes sense but it's all about about mindset not thinking that there's anything that's out of reach for you or that there's anything that you cannot accomplish the way you speak to yourself is very important you need to monitor that and you know just trying to have a positive attitude and having a growth mindset really helped me become who I am today Ugh. I feel so weird talking about myself so highly <laughs> anyway the next question is what's your favorite thing about med school I feel like this is the answer I always give but the answer hasn't changed changed so I'm just gonna give the same answer but the people I feel like the main thing that made my experience a net positive would be the friends I've made and the relationships I've built because if I subtract that from the equation I probably would have dropped out by now <laughs> not really not really but like to me life has always been about relationships that's always been what I found the most joy in and for me med school is no different I really love being able to learn from other people who are like-minded and I really also like having people to push each other to do the best that they can and I feel like the environment is overall very supportive especially at the school I go to so even if I'm in the trenches those relationships I have there help to get me through and that's probably my favorite part of the med school experience so far oh my gosh the next question is what's your favorite animal and why is it a hamster? R.I.P. Coco. <laughs> this question's from my best friend, actually. She had a hamster named Coco who died. R.I.P. Coco. But yeah, hamsters are pretty cool and they're cute and whatnot. Next question. Favorite part, any ophthalmology specific things? So I kind of already answered the favorite part, definitely the people, but let me see if I can think of a second thing. Okay, I weirdly kind of actually liked anatomy lab, like doing dissections and stuff on the cadavers. I kind of enjoy doing it and being able to see everything that I was learning on a body. It was interesting for me. Anatomy was probably my favorite portion of medical school. Some of the dissections 
Cranial sections were really cool. I remember during the neurology unit, we did a craniotomy. So basically we, I'm trying to say this in a way that's very normal sounding. Basically we removed the brain. I guess that's the only way you can really put it. The whole process of that was really interesting to see and seeing how everything comes together, it was really cool. And as for ophthalmology specific things, if you didn't know, I don't think I've actually announced it on my YouTube channel before, but right now my specialty interest is ophthalmology for the most part. Part, but I'm still relatively open and nothing is really set in stone, but I'm like at 75% off though right now. But ophthalmology specific, um, over winter break, I got to shadow an oculoplastic surgeon and that was a really great experience. I got to watch a blepharoplasty, which is basically a surgery that you do to lift up the lower eyelids. Also watched some Botox filler procedures and it was kind of more on the cosmetic side for the most part, but it was still really interesting. In November, I got to go to a conference for the American Academy of Ophthalmology. And that was a really, really great experience. I met so many great people there in New Orleans. And it's really nice to see minorities who are interested in going into the same field as you and being able to see the future of medicine. And that conference is actually where I met the oculoplastic surgeon that I got to shadow. So just making a whole lot of connections and you know being in a different state, it was a really fun experience overall. I would definitely recommend going to conferences. I also did some community outreach that was kind of ophthalmology related. So we went out to some school and we did vision screenings for people in the DC community. I actually went to an ophthalmology scope session last week Monday, which was also super fun. We got to work with the microscopes and like suture little fake eyes and stuff and it was really fun. I feel like I'm boring everybody who's not interested in opto right now. I do look forward to more experiences with ophthalmology as well as all the other specialties. I have no idea where I'm gonna end up in three years, but <laughs> we'll see. The next question is, what was your mindset going into first year? And how did that help and hurt your MS1 experience? This is a good question. If I'm being honest, I think I actually went in with a pretty good mindset in the beginning. I definitely went in with a lot of feelings of excitement and I did not expect it to be easy. And I think the fact that I was relatively realistic in my expectations did help. When people say med school is the trenches, it's not an exaggeration at all. So if you go in knowing that it's going to be hard, but it's still gonna be worth it in the end, it's gonna be a lot easier to push through it. But I feel like a lot of people come into med school and they're all riled up. But then when things start getting hard, it's harder to keep that positive mindset. So it's less about what mindset I had coming in and more about the mindset that I maintained throughout. If I'm being honest, around the November, December, January time, I did struggle a bit more than I did throughout the rest of the year. It's a constant struggle, but like it was like struggle, struggle then. And I feel like through that time, holding to faith and doing positive self-talk rather than negative self-talk helped me to keep myself in a relatively decent ish headspace just the fact that i was nice to myself and i gave myself grace but still being realistic and honest with myself i feel like that went a long way throughout the year i feel like my answer to that question was all over the place but i hope it helps somebody out there the next question is how do i like hucm and would i recommend it so if you don't know hucm stands for howard university college of medicine it's the school i go to for the most part i do really like howard i can't really imagine myself being anywhere else it's really nice being surrounded by people who look like me. And even though the majority of people at HUCM are racial minorities, not everyone's black, only like half the class is black, I think. But nonetheless, there's still so much diversity in the way that people think and what people do for fun. People definitely bring a whole lot of different things to the school and make it such a great community. The people in our class are really there for each other, you know? If one of our classmates is going through something, other people in the class help out. And that's one thing that I really do care about. It's not an environment where everybody is just trying to beat each other down. It's an overall uplifting environment. And people just want to see you succeed for real. Apart from some professors, most of the professors want to see you succeed. 
<laughs> I also, this is kind of a weirder one, but I like how the curriculum is structured in the sense that rather than like having a finals time, we have exams every two weeks. So even though that means there are going to be bouts of stress every two weeks, it definitely keeps you on top of stuff more. What else is there about Howard? Oh yeah, we also know how to have fun. Had a whole lot of really fun events. Shout out to the VPs of activities in SGA and the VPs of wellness. It's definitely a work hard, play hard type of environment. So I'm here for it. The next question is how much sleep did I get? For the most part, I personally, on a regular, regular day, got seven to eight hours of sleep. Just because I know myself, I know without much sleep, I can't function as well as I would. Sleep is something that I personally prioritize. I know some people who just got five hours of sleep every single day and that's what they did. Some people who got less than that, but that was not my story. That was not my portion. I personally tried to get a healthy amount. The next question is how was the exam and how did you use your study habits to perform well? The exams definitely varied. Some were definitely easier than others, but that depended on the unit, the professor's style of asking questions. Yeah, there are a whole lot of variables that could affect how an exam turned out. But one thing that really did help me out, which isn't really a study habit per se, but just listening to what the professors actually care about and trying to predict their questions when studying helped a lot. If you're watching the lecture and the professor is like, this is important, this is important, I always made sure to star the slide just to make sure I give extra attention to that detail when studying. Some professors do this, some professors don't, but being able to sift through the information and figuring out what's most important for the exam, what's the most relevant, it's a skill. And with practice and time, I was able to develop that skill and that helped me out quite a bit. Another thing about study habits in general, for me, I found that the most important thing was to be adaptable. Some medical students have a certain way of studying. Like there's some students who are like onky all day, every day, that's all I do. And they do great. But for me, I found it best to tailor the way I study to what works best for me with the specific unit, with the specific professors. So for example, when I was, you know, starting off with anatomy, like the basic musculoskeletal anatomy, I found that doing Anki helped a lot. And when it came to like radiology, doing Anki helped a lot. But apart from that, I was not an anki -er, you know? Some things, it helped to watch a video. Some things it helped to do practice questions. I didn't have a very strict routine as this is how I study, but just trying my best to study each thing in the best way that it can be studied was what worked for me. So I guess my study habit was not being too habitual in my studying, if that makes any sense. And the last question, which wasn't really asked on Instagram, but my friend asked it to me later and I was like, let me include it, was asking what I eat as a medical student or what medical students eat. In the beginning of the school year, I did a lot of meal prepping, but that kind of died down as things got a little tougher. But for breakfast, I'd usually eat like oatmeal or cereal. For lunch, pasta, or I may go to Pop Bellies. I went to Pop Bellies pretty often to get like a sandwich or something if I was staying on campus. And if I'm being honest, I only really ate twice a day, but I definitely could have had healthier eating habits throughout the school year. I probably ate more candy than I should have or more ice cream than I should have in the beginning, but I eventually got a grip on it. I definitely ate a lot of ramen noodles. I would sometimes make little meals with like spinach and tofu. I wasn't eating anything fancy or special. If I was, it was at a restaurant. I went to a lot of restaurants this year. That's like one of the main things I do on my free time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe, comment, like, share, please. I hope this video helps somebody out there in some way. I will catch y'all in the next one. Adios. Thank you.